Now, continuing on with regard to this uh, matter of the group reversals in conjunction with the zone, as we just mentioned, the zone that you're creating, let's say it's an 1100 tick bar zone, that 1100 tick bar, when you plot it, when you plot the zone on an 1100 tick bar, let's show you what I mean. Now, it appears on the screen this way. 1100 tick bar, here's your zone, here's your lower zone. Okay. In order for this to pull a trade, the close of, or pardon me, the low of the bar, low of the bar must be below the zone. Okay. The low of the bar has to be below the zone. But now, when you are looking at a group reversal, okay. If we were to use this as the group reversal, okay, the low of this bar has to be below the zone at the time the reversal occurs. All right. So if the low of if, if the zone is at 108050, once again, if it's at 108050, uh, 10, the low of this bar is at 10,080.50, it's not below. All right. The close of the bar, in fact, is at 10,80.75. So if I misstated that in the last video, I correct myself. The low of the bar, the low of the bar has to be below the zone at the time the group reversal takes place. All right. So I think I misstated that in the last, in the last video. And the point of the matter is, though, that since our group reversals are not going to take place at the low itself, you could run into some complications using a standard group reversal approach and the zones. There, there will be instances where that will work fine. But if you're real close, pardon me, real close to the zone, you're going to have a problem. So what can you do to offset that? As we indicated here, one way to do that is simply to not use the group reversal. This is not using group reversals, just using standard MACD, good old MACD. You are using the premium. That's good. Okay. Now, there is one other thing that you could do. Now, let me bring back the zone. You can tweak the zone itself. If you've noticed that yeah, you're getting fairly close to these zones, notice what you can do. Change the setting on the zone. Instead of using a 2% band, use something less. Now, watch the difference here. If I set that to 1.5, see where the zone moves? The zone squeezes. Now it's a lot easier for me to be in the zone by tweaking where the zone actually is. 1.8 widens it out a little bit more, but easier to be in the zone. So you you may have to may have to adjust this based on what you see occurring. You may see a need to adjust the zone. Then the group reversal is more likely to be caught within the zone. Let's use, show you an example of this. Now trust me when I say that right here there was a beautiful group reversal. There was a beautiful group reversal. I'll show it to you in a minute. But we didn't get a trade. Number one, we were not below the zone. So supposing we had adjusted this I'm going to make a big adjustment, take it down to 1.5. Now we're in the zone. Okay. We're clearly in the zone there. Probably would have caught it. And here's the reversal. I'll show it to you on the small screen here. See that reversal? Beautiful. So uh, let me continue. The low of this bar at the time of the reversal is 81.50. 
But looking at the zone itself, down band, that's where you read this, 81.41. Okay, so that wouldn't have done it either. This is still too, too high. You'd have to take it down even more. Oops. Now, 81, <clears throat> pardon me, 81.76. Okay, now it would work. So that's another way to tweak this. You may need to modify the band calculation in order to make use of the group reversal approach. Now we'll just wrap up this discussion with this thought in mind. Uh, worked very well today, the approach. Take a good look. Here's your open. Okay, here's 8.30. First long trade, right in here. Where's your best exit? Low of the day. It's in the first 15 minutes. High of the day. Where's it? Where should it be? Okay, where should the high of the day be? Last half hour last half hour. So you could have avoided all this volatility just by knowing pattern of the day. And if you need a refresher on how to figure out what the bias was today, please give us a call, email us. It's very easy to know what the bias was. The bias had a very strong probable long trade today. So that having been said, our next uh, set of videos will deal a little bit more on the subject of stochastics, but I think you've got a good feel now for, for trading with the zones on a live basis. We've talked about uh, where to put the zones. All right, let's go back there. Just quick review. Here's our zone chart. We started off with a 500. That was based upon the overnight market, and that was looking pretty good. But as you got into the day, you could see that as the market continued to move down, as it continued to move up, all right, periodically you would have been getting trades that were premature. So that's going to tell you, all right, we need to make some adjustment to the band. So our decision was to look at an 1100. At 1100, again, you could still see it was, well, pardon me, let's go back and reset this because this was set to two. All right, there we go. So originally, as this was set, this looked better. It looked better. But we also said, let's take a look at a slightly larger band, this band. And that looked even better still. Nice, long, short, long, short. And here is where we would get into some trouble because it didn't come all the way down to the band. But a multiple band approach, dual band in this case, uh, could work well, did work well. And we just need to tweak either the band itself or not use group reversals. And you've seen how we can do that with the uh, strategy. So that in conjunction with the overall pattern of the day, <laughs> winning combination, and you saw it, very nice equity curve with the uh, dual band approach. And even if you stuck with the 500 band all through the day with no profit target, There's the equity curve on that. Not bad. Several more trades, but certainly not bad at all. So that completes our discussion on the subject of the use of a, a dual band approach with or without uh, group reversals.